All right, we're going to go through just a couple examples of using what I call the AC method for factoring quadratics when the leading coefficient is not one. So the reason it's called the AC method is because our first step after, of course, factoring out any greatest common factors will be to multiply the A and the C values together. So in this case, I will multiply six times a negative 35 and when I multiply those two together, I get negative 10. So just like before, on the side, I always make my little list here of what we need. And we're going to need two numbers that multiply to negative 210. And just like when the coefficient was 1, um, to find what they have to add to, we look at the term um, that is the coefficient of our x, or the b. In this case, um, it's just a 1. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 210 and add to 1. Um, so feel free to pause the video and do some trial and error to see if you can find the two values. Um, but the two values that we'll use in this case are going to be the numbers 15 and negative 14 because 15 times a negative 14 is negative 210 and 15 plus a negative 14 is 1. So unlike when our leading coefficient was 1, we can't just use those numbers in our factors. What we'll have to do is write out the entire expression. So we keep the 6x squared the same, but instead of writing just x, we're going to split it up and write it as plus 15x minus 14x. So notice those two added together do add up to 1x, but we're just separating it. And then we're going to keep our constant at the end the same, minus 35. So to factor this expression, what we'll do is we'll factor by grouping. We're going to group these first two terms and these last two terms together. So here, 6x squared plus 15x, we're going to just see if there's anything they have in common that we can factor out. So first I look at the numbers. 6 and 15 both have a 3 in common, and then x squared and x both have an x that we can factor out. So I'll write that down, and what I'm left with when I factor 3x out of these two terms is 2x plus 5 which I'm going to put in parentheses after it. Now, after factoring those first two terms, I look at the last two terms in this expression, negative 14x and a negative 35. Again, I just want to look to see what the two of those terms have in common. The numbers, I see they both have a negative 7 in common, and then an x, they don't both have an x, so I'm just going to factor out a negative 7. And when I take a negative 7 away from negative 14x, I'm left with 2x. And when I take it away from the negative 35, I'm left with plus 5. And notice, this isn't just a coincidence that this happened. I have 2x plus 5 in both of these terms. So the only way that this will work is if these are the same in each piece. Because when they are the same, we can factor it out. So we get 2x plus 5 as one of our factors. And remember, when we take that piece away from each of these, we are left with our second factor, 3x from over here and minus 7. So those would be the factors of that first expression. Now, we can do this same thing with our second one. Okay, just for one more example. To start out, we look to see if these have anything in common, but there isn't a greatest common factor to factor out. So since there isn't, we'll multiply our a and our c together, the 4 and the 3, and 4 times 3 is 12. So we need two numbers that multiply to 12, and then they have to add up to the b value, which is the number in front of the x, and in this case, that would be 7. So two numbers that multiply to 12 but add up to 7. Well, in this one, it's nice and easy because it's the two numbers we used. 4 plus 3 and 4 
times 3 are 12 and 7. So we'll write it out just like before. Keep the first term the same, 4x squared. And then to write the 7x, you'll have to write it as 4x plus 3x. It doesn't matter at all which order you put these terms in. You will get the same factors. And then our last one here is the plus 3. So we group the first two and the last two. And the first two terms have a 4x in common. So we'll factor that out, and when we take away 4x, we're left with x plus 1. Then the second grouping, they have a 3 in common. When we take away a 3, we're also left with x plus 1. So we have an x plus 1 in each piece. We can factor that out. And when we take away that x plus 1, we are left with our second factor, 4x plus 3. And so the factors there will be x plus 1 times 4x plus 3. There are many other methods to factoring, um, but this is just the AC method, which is the method that I prefer to use when factoring.